Well, hi everyone. I'm glad that you have joined me again, and I hope that you enjoyed the story that we read yesterday. It was a great story from Guide Magazine. It was called Better Than a Touchdown, and if you missed hearing that story, you can always look there on our Facebook page and you can find it there because we archived it for you. So if you heard just a bit of the story and weren't able to hear how it ended, or if you heard the ending and didn't hear the beginning, well, you can go back and you can um, listen to that whole story. Well, I'm really excited that you have joined me again here in my house. I'm right here in a corner of my office <laughs> and I'm happy to share a story with you. Um, the book that we're going to read does have eight chapters and so I thought we could start with chapter one today and we'll just continue every day until we're finished and maybe towards the end of this book we can find a different book that we can read together or who knows maybe we'll all be able to go back to our regular lives by then I don't know but it's really really nice to have this chance to spend some time with you so talking about regular life um, things are a little different right now, aren't they? Uh, we've been asked, most of us, to stay more inside. Uh, we can go outside for walks and bike rides and things like that, but we're all staying a little apart from each other, which can mean that we're missing extended family members like our grandparents and aunts and uncles, our cousins, um, that we're missing some of our friends that we usually spend time with. But um, Hopefully, meeting together like this and you've found other ideas of ways that you're not feeling lonely and you are feeling like you're still doing exciting things that you normally do. So every time we meet, let's talk about different ideas that we can have for things that we can be doing during this time when we're mostly at home. And today, I want to talk to you a little bit about animals. Um, if you have a pet, think about your pet right now. And when we're finished the story, I want to hear about your pet. I want to hear what kind of pet you have and what their name is. And I'll tell you a little bit about the pets that we have in our family here, and I'll show them to you too. So we'll do that after the story and we can talk a little bit that way. I'll look for your comments. But here are some <clears throat> ideas of things that maybe you can be doing that have to do with animals while you're at home. So I'm thinking about now Discovery Mountain specifically. And we have a few animals in Discovery Mountain, don't we? We have a few pets. Um, anybody want to jump in there on the comments and tell me the names of some of the pets and the animals that are in Discovery Mountain? I'll give you a minute to think about that, but there are three for sure that I can think of right now off the top of my head that are in Discovery Mountain. And one is really, really important. Um, another one is becoming more important. And a third one has played a big part in different stories. And the three animals I'm thinking of in Discovery Mountain are Gadget, of course. Gadget is Jamie Simon's dog and Peachy the Moose and Kayla's cat, and that's Stormy, Stormy the cat. So if you are not as familiar with those pets in Discovery Mountain, and yes, Venny, you did get the spelling right, it's Gadget. Um, you can go and listen to, here are a couple of episodes I would recommend if you wanna to get to know Gadget better. So Gadget's in a lot of episodes. We know Gadget really well, but there's one season where he really plays a big role, and that's season seven. And so if you look on discoverymountain.com for season seven, um, he Gadget plays a big part in the Puffy Heart mystery. So if you haven't listened to that or you feel like re-listening to that, that's a good one to get to know Gadget a bit better. And Peachy. Peachy plays a role in the season called Family Matters. I think that's season five. Um, but um, let's see, season five. But there's also a mini adventure where we really get to know Peachy. And that mini adventure is called Me Amiga. Me Amiga. So if you look for a Minis 2018, Me Amiga, that's a really nice story with Peachy and Mrs. Torres and Mr. Garcia. 
And then Stormy also has a mini adventure named after her. It's called Stormy and it's a mini from 2019. And so uh, those are a few ideas for you to listen to and uh, get to know some of the animals there. So have you been finding fun things to do online, to do virtually, not just Facebook Live and our story time? There are a lot of really, really cool things that you can do online. And every day that we meet for story time, I'll try and think of new ideas and new websites to suggest to you. But here's one I wanna to suggest to you today when we're talking about animals and pets. Have you ever been to the San Diego Zoo in San Diego, California? Well, we were fortunate enough to live in San Diego for a while, and we loved visiting that zoo. It's amazing. And you know, they have an amazing website. This is the website, moms and dads and grandparents. It's zoo.sandiegozoo.org. So zoo.sandiegozoo.org. And if you scroll down their homepage, they have all kinds of live cameras where you can watch the baboons, you can watch the elephants and they also have information underneath the live cam right on the page where you can learn more about those animals. So they have um, some facts about elephants, facts about baboons and all kinds of really neat things. And then if you're a younger listener, you may really like this website too. It's kids.sandiegozoo.com. Org. And they have some um, neat stories that you can read online about the different animals, and it's really neat. So today, um, and hi Barbara, I'm glad to know that your grandsons love listening to Discovery Mountain too. That makes me really happy. So let's go ahead and read our story. It is called, if you were with us yesterday for the Guide Magazine story, I gave you a little sneak peek of the book that we're going to be reading. And this is it. It's called Mary, let's go this way, Mary Jones and Her Bible. And this book was written, uh, this version of the story was written in the early 1900s, but this story took place even long before that. It took place in the 1700s. And it took place in a country called Wales, Wales, uh, which is part of Europe. It's not part of um, North America, of course. And so some of the names in this story are a little bit difficult to pronounce. <laughs> and I'm going to do my best to try and pronounce them accurately. If you're in Wales listening or if you speak Welsh, you're probably going to think, oh, Miss Jean, you got that so wrong. But I am going to do my very, very best. Well, this story is a story of a young girl who had a deep desire, and that desire was to learn to read and to have a Bible of her own that she could read. And so let's start with chapter one. And the font, or the type size in this book is a little smaller than that guide magazine the other day, so I am going to need my reading glasses. So let's begin here in chapter one. And again, this is the book that we're reading, Mary Jones and Her Bible. Chapter one. It was a gusty afternoon in the late autumn in the year 1792. In those days, the west coast of Wales was even wilder than it is today, and the mountains were rugged and uncultivated. Clouds swept about the craggy summit of Cater Idris, or Idris, while the wind rushed down the valleys towards the sea. A little girl, barefooted but with a shawl wrapped around her shoulders, ran out of a small cottage and crossed a plot of garden to the hen house. She had fed the chickens some time earlier and had now come to shut them in their house for the night. Dusk was falling and most of the hens had gone to roost, but one of a perverse mood still picked imaginary corn from the grass and kept well away from the house. Now, Buffy, cried the little girl, you know it's time to go to roost and I'm in a hurry. Shoo! With a squawk, Buffy scuttled round to the back of the hen house. Oh dear, exclaimed the little girl, did you ever see anything so obstinate? Very well, stay there. I'll go and let the lantern while you make up your mind. She went to a tiny tool shed and unhooked a lantern from a peg. 
but as soon as she was out in the windy garden, the door of the lantern blew opened, and when fastened, it blew open again. This catch is no good, murmured the child to herself. Dear me, everything is going wrong. We shall be late, that is certain. Buffy, get inside, or I shall lock you out for the night. Shoo! The hen, with a cackle, now rushed into the hen house, as if pursued by some enemy, and she and her friends inside awoke the echoes with their cries. The little girl shut and fastened the door, and then ran out of the gate, and in a little way down the road to the neighbor's cottage. She knocked, and then partly opened the door and called out. Mr. Williams, would you kindly lend us your lantern tonight? The latch of ours won't keep fastened, and in this wind, the light would soon blow out. Don't trouble to come out, I will get it. A man came to the door. Why, I thought it was you, Mary Jones, he said. Of course you can have the lantern, and welcome. You are going to the meeting with your mother, I suppose? Yes, yes, you will find it on its hook. Thank you, Mr. Williams, called Mary, as she hurried to the lean-to beside the cottage. It's getting so dark, and we shall be late. Mary ran home with the lantern to find her mother waiting, dressed in her cloak and tall hat, ready to for the start of the meeting. It was a poor room in which she stood, for weavers in their time were poor folk. But a cozy fire burned on the hearth, giving almost as much light as the rush candle that was stuck in a holder in the wall near to the loom. A cupboard, a table, a few chairs and stools, and a bed in the corner were the only furniture, unless a kind of open crate hanging beneath the, ce beneath the ceiling in which the bread was kept was also called furniture. The floor was of earth, but it was neatly swept. Where have you been, child? asked the mother. We shall certainly be late. I had to go to Mr. Williams and ask for his lantern, mother, answered Mary. The latch of ours won't keep shut. Well, we could have done without a lantern, said her mother. Yes, but then I could not have come with you, Mary answered. You know, if I didn't come to light you on your way, they would say at the meeting that I need not come. While she was speaking, Mary put on her shoes. She lit the lantern and she threw her cloak around her shoulders. That would never do, would it, Mary, said her father, who was sitting by the loom. I wish you could come too, father, said Mary, but I suppose it would only make your cough worse. It is such a rough night. You must tell me all that you have heard and sing the hymns you have learned when you come back, answered the father. I will, said Mary. She kissed him, and both mother and daughter called goodbye, father, as they went out into the blustering night. The way to the mission hall was rough and rather long. Mary and her mother stumbled several times, but the light of the lantern saved them from falling. I am glad that you brought the lantern, Mary, said Mrs. Jones. It reminds me of the words of the psalm. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That means that God's word shows us the way we should take in life. Yes, said Mary, and she walked for some little while in silence. What a lot of lovely thoughts there are in the Bible, she said at last. I do wish we had one, but then I couldn't read it, she added with a sigh. Mary was eight years old, but there were no schools anywhere near the village of Lanfihangel, where the Jones family lived. Well, you know a great deal of the Bible for all that, answered her mother cheerfully. Think of the Bible stories that your father has told you. David and Goliath, Daniel in the lion's den, Joseph and his brothers. Yes, said Mary more brightly. I used to cry when I was little, when father told me about the brothers putting poor Joseph in the pit and then selling him. But how wonderfully it all turned out. I wonder what the reading will be to, I wonder what the reading will be tonight. I hope it will be something I have not heard before. The Bible has so much in it. I don't know. I always want to hear more and more. They were soon in the village of Lanfihangel and soon joined a group of people who were going into the little mission hall.
Mary wiped her feet carefully at the door. She put out the lantern light and walked sedately into the room behind her mother. There was a look of interest and expectancy in her face. For these weekly gatherings, for Bible reading, for prayer, and for hymn singing, they were her one great pleasure. In spite of Mary's fears, they were not late, and mother and daughter came in for many friendly greetings and inquiries after Jacob Jones's health. That's Mary's father. There was Evans Evans the shop asking if he could call as he passed by tomorrow, and he was glad to hear that Jacob was not so very ill. There was David Lewis everything saying that he was coming up Mrs. Jones's way on Friday and he would bring her groceries with him to save her the trip or the journey. Now, it must be explained that the shop was not part of Evans, Evan, Evan, Evans's name, but tacked on in this way to distinguish him from Evan Evans, the farm. The first kept a shop, the second kept a farm. So also with David Lewis everything, he kept a little general shop where he sold nearly everything that one needed. These descriptive titles were common in in Wales then, and where there were so many Evanses or Morganses or Lewises or Joneses and so on, it must have been a splendid way of telling one person from another. And this was not confined to the men only. If they had wives, they too carried the title, such as Mrs. David Morgan the blacksmith, Mrs. Williams the butcher, and so on. Now, amongst the company at the meeting that evening was a visitor from Tawin who had come with Mr. and Mrs. Evans the farm. (laughs) He noticed Mary's bright face and her dark eyes that were shining with quiet excitement. Who is the little maid then, he asked. She is young to be at a meeting like this. Oh, that is Mary Jones, a dear child, said Mrs. Evans. She is as interested in the hymns and the reading as any grown person. She never misses a meeting. In fact, a meeting without our Mary would not be the same. Well, well, said the visitor, looking kindly at Mary. Indeed, that is very good. Well, the psalm was now given out, and after some ahems from a few of the elder ones, the company swung into the refrain of the metrical version of the song, The Lord is My Shepherd, sung, of course, in the native Welsh language. The little building rang with the tuneful voices, for what Welsh man or woman cannot sing? Mary's treble could be heard amongst the women's voices, for she sang with her whole heart. The Bible reading was of the Lord's transfiguration and the healing of the epileptic boy. Mary had never heard this before, and she sat enthralled. Neither she nor her mother spoke much on their way home, but before she went up to the little loft that was her bedroom, Mary recounted the whole story to her father, almost word for word as she had heard it. Yes, her father said, I remember it, but I had not thought of it for some time. How I wish we had a Bible of our own, but they are too dear for us to buy and too hard to get too. Well, the next day, the weather was calmer and Mary went out into the tidy little garden to work in it. With her usual energy, she hoed and she raked the weeds for some time, tossing back her thick curls when the light breeze blew them over her face and throwing odd pieces of cabbages to the fowls from time to time. The fowls, of course, were her chickens and taking care of them. Her thoughts were as busy as her hands, and after a while, she stood still leaning on her hoe and just gazing up at the mountains. They were very lovely this morning, for sunshine and shadow floated over the rocky slopes as the little clouds chased each other across the sky. Now, towards midday, Mrs. Jones came out. She had been busy at her weaving all the morning. Well, well, Mary dear, she cried. Are you tired? You have been working too hard. 
Your father has been watching you from the window, and he says that you have been standing for a long, long time, as still as a statue. <laughs> Mary turned to her mother with a quiet smile on her face. No, mother, I'm not tired a bit, but I was thinking of what we heard read last night about Jesus up on the mountain and being all changed, even his clothes white and glistening. How beautiful it must have been. No wonder Peter didn't know what to say. And I was thinking that those mountains, they must be like the mountains where Jesus went. And as the sun shone in bright patches on the rocks and the grass, I could almost picture it all happening there. Mary's eyes kindled and her face shone as she spoke. Oh, I am so glad I heard that reading last night. And then... Once a little mist came up, she went on, right at the top of the mountain. That was like the mist that covered them as they heard the voice from heaven. It was wonderful. The Lord has blessed thee, Mary dear, said Mrs. Jones, much moved. And while you keep his words in your heart, you will never lack of happiness. Well, the next day was market day at Aberdeen. Aber, how oh, I gotta look up how to say this, Aberginawin, a village two miles away from the village where they lived in Lanfee Hangel, and Mary was out feeding the chickens. She always liked to be in the garden early that day to see the folk going to market, and many had a pleasant word for her as they passed. Down the hilly road they would come, farmers' wives in tall black hats and red cloaks, sitting firmly on their stout farm ponies baskets of eggs or butter in their laps, and perhaps a daughter or small son behind them. They feared neither wind nor weather, and it would be, good day to you, Mary child, or are your parents well, Mary, as they trotted by, or it might be a youth driving some pigs or trying to do so, and Mary would laugh at the animal's antics. Well, today, Mrs. Evan Evans, the farmer, reined in her pony at the Joneses' gate, and Mary ran to open the gate. Good morning, Mary, said Mrs. Evans. Thank you, yes, I will come in for a moment. There, the pony will be all right with the bridle over the gate post. I'll just have a word with your mother and father. Good morning, Jacob. How is the cough? Better, I hope. Good morning, Molly. You and Mary look none the worse for your rough walk last Monday night. Wasn't the singing fine? And I could hear Mary's voice taking her part famously. Our good friend from Tawin, Ivor Jones, was quite taken with the little maid. He said he never saw anyone, young or old, listen to the gospel so attentively. Mary flushed with shy pleasure. I had never heard it before, Miss Sevens, she said. I thought it was the grandest story about Jesus that I had ever heard. We do so wish that we had a Bible of our own, said Mrs. Jones, whose name also was Mary, though she was always known as Molly. And now that Mary is getting bigger and loves God's word so much, she can repeat many texts that she has heard at the meetings, and some she has learned from us. We feel the, the miss more and more every day, though Jacob and I do not read very well ourselves. So there's another hard thing poor Mary has to face, said Jacob. Do you know, Mrs. Evans, she is eight years old, but she cannot read? How can she learn with no school anywhere in these parts? Mary flushed again, but not with pleasure this time. I wish I could learn, she said. I do so want to read. Do not be downcast, Mary, said kind Mrs. Evans. God has given you the wish to learn and to know more of his ways, and he will make a way for you. Be sure of that. But I must be getting on, or I, or I shall be late in the market. I need more eggs. Our hens are laying badly, and I haven't enough for a customer that I have promised. Can you let me have some? Oh, Mary is our, our hen wife, said Mrs. <laughs> our hen wife. That must mean that she takes care of the hens. Mary is our hen wife, said Mrs. Jones, smiling. Mary, dear, run and get what you can for Mrs. Evans. Men, Mary hurried out 
and soon returned with about a dozen eggs, which Mrs. Evans paid for, and then rose to go. Mary went with her to the gate to hold her basket while she mounted the pony. Cheer up, Mary, said Mrs. Evans. God will open a way for you. And listen, child, when you can read and you want to read the Bible, you are welcome to come to us and use our Bible whenever you wish. That is, if you like to walk two miles to do so. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Evans, cried Mary. Two miles is nothing. I would walk twice as far. Well, that is a promise then, called Mrs. Evans. Don't forget, God will make your way plain in his good time. Mrs. Evans, the farm, took the reins and the pony trotted off. Mary stood looking after her. Then, with her good friend's words still ringing in her ears, she clasped her hands together. Oh God, she whispered, please make a way for me to learn and to know more of the Bible. She turned and went back into the cottage, feeling a kind of sure hopefulness that made her happy for the rest of the day. She trusted, and that was enough. And how surely God can be trusted by those who believe and wait upon his will. Now, and these are the last two pages of this chapter. Now, far away from Mary's home, more than 25 miles away, there lies among the eastern hills of Wales, a small town of Bala, a quiet little place. Its great attraction is the beautiful lake that stretches away amongst the hills. Bala stands on its shore. Now, in a street in this town, there is a pleasant house, the front level with the pavement. And in a room in that house, a clergyman sits at a desk writing. The walls are lined with books. The desk is covered with neat piles of letters and other papers. For a busy man must be tidy or time will be wasted. It may have been on that very day that Mary offered her little prayer at the gate, or not long afterwards, that this busy minister was writing to a friend. And this is what he wrote. I am troubled about the district of Aberginawen, he wrote. There is much ignorance and bad behavior amongst the children, to say nothing of their elders. It is too far from Barmouth for them to attend school there. A village must have a school of its own. But how to find a true and godly man for its master? That village and district will weigh on my heart until something is done. The Reverend Thomas Charles rested his head on his hand deep in thought. It must be done, he murmured to himself. Now in those days, most of the people of the villages in Wales were unable to read. They toiled hard for their living, children as well as grown-up folk, and their Sundays were usually spent in gambling, at some sport, drinking and often fighting. The boys of a village were hardened roughs, or as they would be called now, toughs, who were a constant nuisance, and they were a danger to the neighborhoods. The Reverend Thomas Charles spent his life in founding schools in these villages, and where they had been opened, for some little time, a great change came over the people. The children were glad to learn. The Welsh people are naturally intelligent, and they only needed something to occupy their minds. The funds and the teachers were difficult to get, and that was the burden of Mr. Charles's heart. <clears throat> well, that's the end of chapter one of Mary Jones and her Bible. In chapter two, I'll give you a little sneak peek. Let's see what it's called. It's called The One Great Need. And so tomorrow we can pick up on chapter two. You know, Mary was eight years old. And if you missed the very beginning of that story, that's okay. We're going to archive this and you can, you can catch up with us and listen to the whole thing from the beginning. But this story took place a long time ago, 1792 in Wales. And Mary was only eight years old and she couldn't read but she wanted desperately to learn to read so she could learn to read the Bible. 
Well, before we started reading our story, we talked a little bit about animals and about pets. And I said to you that I will show you the pets in our house here in just a minute. And as I'm doing that, I wanna hear about your pets. So if you're still here with us live, um, go ahead and tell us about the pets that you have. Do you have a dog or cat? And what kind of a dog or cat do you have? And share with us their names. We'd love to hear that. In Discovery Mountain, we have Gadget. Gadget is an Australian shepherd, and we have Stormy the cat, and we have Peachy the moose. And I have a few pets in my family too, and I don't know if you can see my pet Fish, who's right over there, right in front of the plant. Her name is Cassiopeia, and she's a beta fish. And I'm gonna get her for a minute, but there's someone I want to come in right now. And if she's listening, are you listening out there, Naomi? Naomi? <laughs> Naomi is going to come in, and she's going to show you one of her pets. You have a, <laughs> here, I'm gonna let you sit here. So I'm gonna stand up, and Naomi's gonna sit down and show you one of our pets. Come on in. <laughs> This is Danny. Oh, where's the camera? There we right go. Right there. Yeah, she's a mouse. Ooh! I actually have two more mice downstairs, but I thought I should only hold one at a time. That's just in probably case a they idea. run. Maybe hold Danny a little higher so they can see Danny. Danny's oh. actually a girl, even though her name is Danny, so I spell it D A N I. <laughs> <laughs> and she's cute. I like her. I think she's cute, but I don't want to hold her. Not for a minute. So sit there and let them look at Danny. Okay. And I'm going to get Cassiopeia. So Cassiopeia is a beta fish. <laughs> Whoa. I'll bring her close and see if everybody can see her. Cassiopeia but used to be mine, but she my mom yours. fell in love with her. <laughs> yeah, she's a baby girl fish. Let's see if we can get her in there. Oh, there she is. She's not terribly active. So you can see her kind of there in front of the blue, her little blue house where she likes to hide. There she is. Um, and you have a beta fish upstairs too, mm -hmm. Naomi. Yeah, yeah his name is Firefly. His name is Firefly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those are our pets. Let me get her back here where she belongs. Whoops. Off. There we go. And so I hope that you at home are enjoying some time. Give you your okay, <laughs> thanks, Naomi. <laughs> are enjoying you're enjoy, enjoying some time where you have extra time at home right now. Thanks, Naomi. Um, with your pets, and your pets are probably really happy to have you at home and have some extra time with you. So Georgia says that she has um, a dog and a cat. Um, and then Amanda says that she used to have a cat named Atticus. Oh, that's from the book To Kill a Mockingbird. You remember there's an Atticus in that book? Oh, very neat. And when I was growing up, I had a cat too, and her name was Missy. We really loved her. She was really sweet. My brother and my sister and I um, found her and brought her home and my mom made us go to every house in the whole neighborhood to find out if anyone was missing a cat if she belonged to anyone and only after we were absolutely sure that she wasn't someone's lost cat we got to keep her and we had her for a really long time so thank you everyone for enjoy for joining us for story time and we'll do this again tomorrow so whatever time it was that we started today where you are right here in colorado that was at 11 o'clock it might be 10 o'clock where you are it might be one o'clock where you are depending where you live um, we will do this again tomorrow and oh i see anita anita says she has a miniature dash Hound or Dachshund, I think is how you say it here in the U.S. In Canada, you say, call it a Dash Hound, and the dog's name is Jemima. That's really cute. <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining for story time. Let's do this again tomorrow, where we will pick up again with Mary Jones and her Bible, and we'll talk about some other things too. And I'll try and think of some ideas of other cool websites that you can visit virtually for something fun to do while you're at home. So stay healthy and stay happy and um, just stay connected to your family and God is always with you. Stay connected to him too, of course. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.